Hello? Hello, everybody. So we are, uh, I think, uh, yes, we are a lot of people here. So I think uh, it's uh, 9.35 here a.m. So we can, uh, I think we can start. Okay, for at first, uh, as I told you before, thank you very much for uh, joining this, uh, this webinar. And uh, uh, we are going to, I'm going to do, to, to do a short presentation about the system, the CDR Food Lab. And uh, after that, uh, uh, me and uh, my two colleagues, Laura and Julia, we are going to uh, run a demonstration live, uh, running analysis uh, uh, like uh, free fatty acid, peroxides, and, uh, and anisinib after this uh, presentation, as I told you. So, uh, sorry. Same problem uh, always. Just a second. Okay. So let's start. Uh, maybe, Julia? So, um, before to start, uh, a pretty short presentation about, uh, about CDR, as we do always. CDR is a, a company that uh, works uh, in different sectors, as you can see. We work uh, practically in four sectors. Uh, we, uh, we have a specific uh, part of the company that produces uh, uh, telematic systems. So in this case, we, we develop and produce uh, automatic uh, tolls. Uh, for the motorways, so it's a pretty different sectors about uh, the sectors we are the sector we are going to talk uh, today. The other one is the medical diagnostics. Actually, uh, we have started uh, talking about the telematic. We started in uh, 1970, so as you can see, CDR is a pretty old company, and uh, after uh, more or less. Uh, 20 years, yeah, we can say uh, CDR started uh, its activity into the uh, medical diagnostics uh, at that time in collaboration with uh, an international group uh, acquired the know-how um, to develop and build and produce, of course, uh, uh, photometers, photometers uh, for medical diagnostics in this case. After uh, other 10 years, so we are talking about uh, 2000 more or less, uh, CDR decided to uh, transfer the know-how of the medical diagnostics uh, into the food diagnostics. In this case, uh, starting uh, uh, developing and producing uh, and producing uh, uh, reagents uh, for uh, also reagents for uh, uh, for the food applications. So in this case, we are talking about uh, analysis systems for food and beverage. The last sector we, we open uh, is, the, uh, is a sector uh, in, in which we produce uh, sensors and probes uh, for different applications. Actually, we uh, have started this new sector uh, in the pandemic time. Of course, uh, we, are, we are going to talk uh, in this webinar about uh, the uh, food diagnostics. So, in food diagnostics, uh, we work uh, in different sectors. The first one uh, is uh, where we, we work with uh, the analyzer that, that is, is called CDR Food Lab. In this sector, we, uh, we work, for example, uh, for, with this analyzer, we, uh, we work, for example, uh, in the milk and dairy products sector, in the, the, the sector of egg products, tomato or bakery products. Here, we we work with only one analyzer. The CDR Food Lab is able to, to run analysis on all these uh, matrices. About the beverage, we work in wine, beer and water, cider and kombucha. Here we have uh, uh, customized analyzers. So we have a specific analyzer each sector. We are talking about wine lab, beer lab, cider lab and uh, kombucha. What about the oil uh, sector? The oil sector, uh, the oil and fat sector. This is uh, the uh, the topic of this uh, of 
this webinar, we are able to work on all kind of vegetable oils, uh, all kind of animal fats, and of course, we are able to analyze also nuts, hard shell fruits, or also snacks, okay, fried snacks. Here, we work again with the CDR Food Lab, and we have two dedicated analyzers, the CDR uh, Oxytest, specific for olive oil, and the CDR Palm Oil Tester, specific for uh, uh, palm oil. As CDR, we work uh, all over the world. We uh, sell in more than 10, uh, uh, um, sorry, on 100 countries, uh, and we uh, sell, uh, uh, of course, using uh, distributors uh, or also uh, directly. This, thanks to the fact that the, the, uh, the analyzer is very, very easy, so uh, the customer can easily open the, the box, uh, set up the uh, the analyzer and start running analysis. So what about uh, the CDR Food Lab? CDR Food Lab is a range of chemical analysis systems, easy to use and versatile. And uh, with these systems, uh, you are able to analyze uh, a wide panel of parameters. What about the system? The system is composed by the analyzer and uh, the reagents. Uh, the analyzer the analyzer, as you can see, is, uh, uh, is in two versions. So we have a big one, we have a big analyzer and a small analyzer. Uh, both are, uh, uh, are developed with reading cells with, uh, that use uh, LED emitters uh, with a fixed wave wavelengths. We are going to talk a little bit more in detail uh, after about this. Uh, the reagents, uh, we produce the reagents, the reagents as well, and uh, we uh, sell reagents uh, in packages uh, of 10 tests. 10 tests uh, mean uh, 10 cuvettes, 10 prefiller cuvettes, ready to use and uh, already calibrated. Of course, we need a pipette to collect the sample. So the system is composed by analyzer, reagents, uh, and pipette. That's it. So, which are the uh, most important features uh, uh, and the advantages uh, of the CDR systems compared to the traditional methods? Of course, uh, uh, reduced testing times. Uh, our uh, analysis, and uh, we, we are going to see three examples after, are very, very quick. Uh, for example, we can run an acidity, a free fatty acid, uh, in, uh, in 10 seconds, okay? Uh, the easiness of the use, uh, everyone can use the system. You don't need to be a chemist uh, to, uh, to run analysis, okay? So everyone can use the food lab. The reagents are ready to use, okay? So uh, what means? It means uh, um, the cubits are already, cali are already calibrated and prefilled in cubits. Another important feature is the uh, possibility to use the analyzer at line in the processing plant. So you, with these systems, uh, uh, all the systems, uh, you are able to transfer the quality control directly at production line. This is a pretty big advantage because you can have results in real time and you can take decisions about the production in real time without waiting uh, uh, for, for the uh, results from the laboratory. You don't need any maintenance. The system is very strong. Uh, so uh, you can move the system where, where you want. Uh, and uh, uh, the last, of course, but not the least, uh, you don't need any calibration. This is why we calibrate our reagents on our analysis. So we supply a system and reagents, of course, already calibrated uh, and ready to use. In the end, everyone can use this system, okay? So what about the instrument's uh, features? As I told you, of course, you can see how, 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 how it is. Uh, we have an incubation part, we have a reading part, we have a printer and, uh, and a screen, and a touch screen. So uh, we have uh, 16 wells. Uh, it means uh, you can work with many samples at the same time. Anyway, 
as I told you, no maintenance, uh, no calibration, and uh, with this incubation part, uh, you are able to run 16, up to uh, 16 analysis at the same time. So you can uh, save a lot of time. Of course, in this case, we are talking about 16 analysis of the same parameter at the same time. But uh, you can work also uh, in a different way. You have uh, an, uh, a sample and uh, you can run different parameters, different analysis uh, at the same time on the same sample. This is the multitasking mode. So mm, practically, you can run, for example, 16 analysis of free fatty acid on uh, 16 different samples or you have a sample and you can run at the same time uh, free fatty acid peroxides and this. As I told you, the system is very strong. We give uh, three years warranty and we have a touch screen where the producer, the, the, the procedure, sorry, are explained uh, and displayed uh, step by step, so you can follow the procedure uh, when you are doing the analysis. So the reading cell, as I told you, we use uh, LEDs as uh, wavelength sources. Uh, this uh, allows us to have a wider range in absorbance. Normally, the standard photometry can have uh, a, a range in absorbance between zero and two, three, let's say three. In our case, we have uh, a range in absorbance uh, between zero and six. So this uh, uh, gives us uh, two or three times more the normal uh, range of the standard photometry. And of course, this is a, a big advantage uh, compared, compared to the standard photometry. What about the systems? As I told you, we have uh, two versions. So uh, we have the big one, the CDR Food Lab, this is called the uh, CDR Food Lab, and uh, the small one, the junior. So in the Food Lab, you are able to run anal all the analysis on all the matrices. Uh, of course, you have a printer. You are able to uh, run 16 analysis of the same typology at the same time, or as we've seen before, we can run the multitasking. It means uh, uh, different analysis at the same time on the same sample. What about the junior? The junior is the, is the little brother. So uh, as you can see, you have uh, only the reading cell and the reading cell is exactly the same. Uh, it, uh, about the junior for oils and fats, it can be configured with uh, three, uh, with a, a, a reduct, uh, reducted number of analysis, of course, uh, in this case, free fatty acids, uh, peroxides, anisidine, SOPs, and iodine value. Of course, you don't have a printer. You can run three analysis uh, of the customer choice uh, of the same typology. You cannot uh, run the multitasking in this case. Okay, of course, uh, both version, with both versions, you, uh, uh, you can connect them uh, to the computer in order to for example, to export the results, if you like. What about the reagents? Uh, as I told you, CDR develop, develops and produces the reagents. And uh, uh, the main feature of our reagents uh, is that uh, they are in profiled cuvettes. So they are uh, uh, ready to use. So easily, you can open the, open the um, the, the kit and you can take the cubits and start running the analysis. So it means uh, you can easily use the systems uh, uh, at the production line. We use a micro quantity of sample. Okay, it means uh, the, the amount of sample is very low and it means uh, also uh, the, the reagents, the amount of the, uh, of the waste reagents is uh, uh, as low as possible. One milliliter, we have pre uh, cubettes, profiled cubettes of one milliliter. So uh, one analysis means uh, to consume just one milliliter of reagent. You don't need, as I told you, any calibration. So this is why uh, we uh, 
calibrate our reagents for you, and we supply uh, reagents already calibrated. We have, of, co of course, uh, also uh, a pretty long shelf life. Normally, the shelf life of a package of uh, 10 tests is uh, one year. Okay, uh, I forgot to tell, I'm, uh, there are a uh, few questions. Uh, uh, of course, after this presentation, we can uh, answer uh, of, the, of the, um, the question that you can start uh, uh, writing uh, on the chat if you want. You can write uh, your questions uh, now. And after this session, we are going to answer. Of course, also, uh, we can answer a few questions uh, also after the presentation okay so uh, don't be shame don't be shy sorry and uh, and you can uh, you can ask all the questions uh, you want okay so okay here you have uh, a comparison with the standard photometry so uh, as i told you we have uh, uh, Calibrated reagents. Uh, normally, in the standard in the standard standard photometry, you don't have uh, calibrated reagents, so you have to calibrate your reagents uh, on your photometer. We have uh, with the CDR food lab, we have a thermostated an analyzer. We have short reactions, uh, and we have a high performance uh, about the reading cell. As I told you, we have uh, uh, we have a wide range in absorbance between zero and six. Another important feature is also the, uh, the life of the reading cell. We, it is very, very long. We have uh, on the market analyzers for, for more than 10 years uh, without any expiry. And uh, we have to consider also that uh, most of our analyzers on the market, on the market work 24 hours a day. Uh, this is why, and this is thanks to the, uh, to the LEDs uh, uh, in action, okay. We don't we don't need maintenance. Uh, we have uh, uh, this analyzer, these systems. Uh, as I told you, can be used by everyone. You don't need to be a chemist. While in the no normal photometry, of course, uh, you need uh, um, you need a chemist uh, you, or you need a technician to use it because you have to adjust, you have to calibrate, and you have to do a lot of stuff. Uh, uh, to have a result. So in the end, the advantages uh, of the food lab, easy to use, strong system, no calibration or check required. And uh, as I just told you, everyone can use these systems. You don't need any, any technical background. Wider range of absorbance and possibility to get results in real time. And this uh, uh, allow, uh, allows us uh, to use these systems uh, into the production. So you can avoid to send samples to the quality control and wait for the results. With the food lab, you have results uh, in real time. So let's start uh, uh, talking about uh, a little bit in detail about uh, the machine. So. Uh, this is the food lab. With this analyzer, you are able to you are, you are able to analyze liquid or solid samples as well, because uh, of course liquid samples are pretty easy. We can collect the sample and run the analysis. About the solid samples, uh, we uh, thanks to the fact that we uh, use micro quantity, we are able to with a, a short and easy. Uh, sample treatment, uh, we are able to extract the, solid, the, the liquid part, sorry, and uh, we can analyze it. Anyway, we will see a few examples after about this, uh, these treatments. So here you have uh, all the parameters uh, you are able to run uh, with, uh, with the food lab. So as you can see, you, have, uh, you can run a lot of analysis uh, on uh, different matrices. So you can uh, uh, run, for example, uh, uh, analysis uh, on the uh, raw material or even on the final products. As you can see here, Beckery products, uh, we are able to run free fatty acid, peroxide, and anisinin on the solid sample, 
on the on the finished product. And this, of course, after a short uh, uh, a short treatment uh, uh, that uh, allows us to extract uh, uh, the oil from the internal part of the product. So what about uh, oils and fats? That is the topic of this uh, webinar. We can run free fatty acids, peroxides, anisine in value, SOPs, and iodine value. These are the main uh, uh, important tests in this, uh, in this sector. Of course, you can work on uh, oils, uh, vegetable oils or animal fats, and as I told you, nuts and our shelled fruits, okay? So let's, uh, let's do a focus uh, on the most important analysis in this case, uh, that are, of course, free fatty acid, the main, the main parameter, but also peroxides and anisine. So, of course, the, uh, the, the free fatty acid is the most important parameter related to the quality of the oil or the, or the fat. The peroxide, uh, peroxides represent the primary oxidation state of the oil, while anisine is the secondary oxidation state of the oil or, or the fat. What about the traditional methods? Now we are going to compare uh, the advantages of the, of the food lab with uh, the uh, traditional methods, okay? So what about the traditional methods for free fatty acids? You have to run a titration. Peroxides, you have to run another kind of titration. An easy value, you need a photometer because you have to run uh, a, a, a photometrical analysis uh, about this uh, about this parameter so as you can see here to uh, to run these three parameters you need three different uh, devices three different instruments mm -hmm. okay with the different techniques here you have a comparison as you know of course about the food lab with the same analyzer with the same handling we are going to we are going to see it uh, we are able to run the three analysis, free fatty acid, peroxides, and anisine. So this is the main advantage. One, ana one analyzer, one system uh, for more analysis. Anyway, here we have uh, the, the free fatty acid. So about the traditional method, you need uh, normally 50, 100 milliliters of solvents. Of solvent. You need uh, sodium hydroxide. Of course, you need glassware. You need a fume hood because you have to use a lot of solvent and phenolphthalein as an indicator. Estimated time about uh, this analysis, five minutes, more or less. What about the food lab? You have the analyzer and you have just one milliliter in perfilet cuvette, ready to use. In this case, in our case, the estimated time is 10 seconds. 10 seconds to run one analysis or as I told you, you can uh, fill the incubation part with 16 cubettes so that you can run 16 analysis at the same time. So roughly in 10 minutes, uh, you can run 16 uh, analysis. So you can have 16 results in only 10 minutes. What about the peroxides? More or less the same is the, tra the traditional method is the titration. So uh, you have uh, 25 milliliters of uh, reagents used. You have different uh, kind of reagents. Uh, and of course, again, you need glassware and you need a few mood. Uh, of course, you can run this titration and the, titra the, the titration we've seen about the free fatty acid in a laboratory. We, we don't have any other way to run this analysis. You need to be uh, in a quality control laboratory. So about the peroxide values time, uh, 10 minutes, let's say 10 minutes. With the food lab, again, the analyzer, another one milliliter of perfilet cuvette, another cuvette, of course, the cuvette is different, and only 10 microliters of a reagents, of reagents that you have to add in the perfilet cuvette. In this case, the analysis time that is just an incubation time, so you have to wait, we, we will see everything after, uh, three minutes. Three minutes, again, with the possibility to fill all the incubation part up 
and uh, uh, running uh, 16 analysis at the same time on 16 samples. So in the same 10 minutes you run the titration, you can run uh, 16 analysis with the full block. What about the nizidin? Uh, as, as I told you, it's a photometrical analysis, so uh, you need 25 milliliters of isohoctan, different reagents, uh, glassware again, and fume hood. Uh, an important point here, the anisidin, the agent of the reference method or traditional method is cancerogenic. So this is a big problem for the, uh, for the quality control as well, because you have to manage, you have to deal with the cancerogenic uh, uh, of the agent. Uh, in our case, the food lab uh, uses uh, a no cancerogenic reagent. So this is the big point, uh, the big feature of uh, our system. What about the uh, traditional time, uh, traditional method time, 15 minutes, the food lab, one minute. So again, with the food lab, you are able to run in uh, one minute uh, the uh, the analysis uh, all uh, without uh, a cancerogenic reagent. So this means, again, you can easily transfer this quality control uh, to the production line. So you can use the food lab uh, close to the production line. So what about the ranges? Uh, we have uh, wide ranges for uh, all the parameters. Uh, in this case, uh, for example, free fatty acid, we have a range between 0 0.01 to 26 kiloleic acid. Peroxide's value mm, up to uh, 550 uh, milli equivalent of oxygen per kilo. And then is it in the same, we have a pretty big range uh, between 0 0.5 and 100 of, uh, of anisin. So no problem at all about, uh, uh, about uh, your results uh, and the level of uh, your results. Uh, a few words about uh, the correlation with the reference method, because of course uh, all of our systems are correlated to the reference method. So as you can see from uh, uh, these graphs, uh, uh, they are absolutely, they have uh, absolutely the same accuracy of the reference methods. As you can see here, these graphs uh, uh, come from the, an evaluation study of uh, uh, a big international laboratory that is uh, Camden BRI in UK, in London. And uh, here you can see the R square of uh, anisidin, peroxides, and free fatty acids. So 0 0.99 about the anisidin. Uh, 0 0.97 about peroxides and 0 0.98 about uh, free fatty acids. So, so it means uh, uh, the CDR full lab is uh, uh, completely or is uh, as a great uh, correlation uh, compared to the reference method. Okay, so with this uh, R squares, uh, uh, you can use the, free, the, the CDR full lab as uh, a reference method. What about the repeatability of the system? Here you have uh, a few examples about, uh, again, an easy in peroxides and, uh, and free fatty acid. So for example, here we can see free fatty acid. We have uh, uh, on 10 samples, uh, we have a standard deviation that is exactly the same of the reference value, okay? Uh, for peroxides, we have 0 0.5 uh, versus 0 0.3, practically, it's comparable. And uh, again, about uh, anisidin, uh, we have 0 0.13, uh, and uh, with the reference method, they had uh, at 0 0.07. So anyway, these repetibilities are more than great uh, if we talk about quality control. So, as I told you, uh, liquid samples, we can work on all kind of oil or, uh, or fat, uh, or we can analyze crude or refined oil, of course. Uh, we don't have any problem uh, of uh, color of, or viscosity. As I told you, in, in case of solid fat, uh, it is enough to melt it uh, to collect the sample and carry out the analysis. 
What about uh, instead the, the solid samples? So we are able to work on nuts, partial fruits or seeds, snacks, of course, we can consider them also as a solid sample with, with oil inside. Uh, we can work also on pet food or on flowers. Okay, so uh, to work on these, uh, on these samples, so we have to perform uh, a little sample treatment and we, uh, we will see a few examples after. Here you have the, uh, what about the, the food lab? What about the analysis of snacks with the food lab? So we are talking about fried snacks. So if uh, a company that produces snacks wants, uh, wants to see the oxidation of the product, we can do it easily. Uh, this, uh, uh, thanks to the fact that we use uh, a micro quantity of sample, okay? So, practically, we have to collect uh, a little bit of sample, let's say 10 grams, 20, 30 grams. Uh, we fill uh, uh, a part of uh, this uh, food press, we squeeze the product, uh, and we, mechanically, we extract the oil inside. We extract uh, a little amount that would be impossible um, to analyze uh, with the, the reference method. But thanks to the micro quantity of the sample of, of the food lab, we can analyze it. So after the, the, the press, uh, of course, we get uh, a suspension of uh, solid and oil, okay? Solid part from the product and oil. So after a short uh, centrifugation, we can easily separate the solid part from the oil. So uh, after the centrifugation, we have a clear oil that you can analyze. It. So this is the big advantage. You can run, again, you can run only one extraction and uh, you can run three analysis on the, same, on, on the same extraction. This allows you to have uh, uh, an idea, an idea, you, have, uh, you can have it. Very important information about the oxidation of your product in terms of peroxides, anisinin, and of course, uh, uh, free fatty acid as well. What about nuts? Uh, about nuts, uh, the, the situation is the same, is exactly the same. You collect the sample, uh, you, with the food press, uh, you squeeze the, the oil from the, from the sample. After that, we centrifuge the sample and we get uh, on the top of the cubit, uh, uh, a little amount of oil that you can use for the analysis, uh, like you if you if you had uh, a normal oil. So you can run again free fatty acid peroxide and anisinin. What about the the flower? Uh, in the case of the flower, of course, we have uh, a different uh, uh, extraction. So uh, in this case, uh, we need to extract, uh, we need to extract uh, using uh, one gram of product, uh, adding three milliliters of a specific extraction solution. Here, a difference is that we need, because of course, uh, in, the, uh, in the previous example, uh, in case of nuts or snacks, uh, we extract uh, the oil directly. So our sample is, uh, oil okay in this case we are going to perform an extraction so after the centrifugation we will collect uh, the supernatan that, that that will be uh, represented by the extraction solution itself uh, and uh, the oil or the fat uh, of the sample so in this case we need uh, to calculate to recalculate the values of free fatty acid peroxide and anisinin we need the information of the fat percentage. So having this information, you can put the fat percentage into the food lab and the food lab automatically will recalculate, will recalculate the, uh, the result. What about the pet food? Again, uh, in this case, uh, we have just to grind the product in order to get uh, a sort of uh, flour. Okay, so again here, one gram, we had uh, three milliliters of extraction solution. We homogenize, of course, we homogenize uh, uh, for 10 minutes, uh, the same for uh, flour, the example before. After this uh, extraction, we uh, centrifuge 
and uh, we collect the supernatants. Again, here, of course, we need the fat percentage. A few references uh, all over the world. Uh, uh, here we have uh, Lays, so we are talking about PepsiCo. PepsiCo is our customer. Or uh, uh, So here we are talking about snacks. We can easily um, analyze uh, the oil over the, the frying process. And as we've seen, also, we can analyze the final product. Epax, this is a, a producer of fish oil. In this sector, is very important the anisinin. The anisinin, uh, this parameter, because of course, the uh, fish oil is a pretty unstable product. So uh, the, the anisinin value and not the peroxide is uh, the most important. Rolling Hills, uh, this is a nut company, producer of nut, uh, that uh, uses our system, as I told you, to uh, check the oxidation of the product, okay? Uh, Tyson ingredients, this is, uh, I think, the, uh, the biggest uh, producer of uh, flour uh, or uh, ingredients of different, of different kind. They use the food lab to check uh, peroxides. United Pet Food is uh, a producer of pet food, a European producer of pet food. And also, they intensively use uh, the, uh, the food lab to analyze free fatty acid and peroxide on raw material, on oil and fat that uh, they add as ingredient into, into the flowers or to, uh, into the flowers uh, as well. So practically we have finished and uh, give us a few, a few minutes, two minutes before, before start the demonstration, of course, we can check uh, a few questions. There, we have a lot of questions, so we hope we can answer uh, all of them. Okay, so let's see. Okay, uh, Jose Neves is asking, could you, please, could you please explain about reading part, the difference between the incubation part? It's pretty easy. The incubation part is just a part where you uh, can work the qubits up. Just that, okay? It's just a well at 37 degrees Celsius. The reading part is at 37 degrees Celsius too, but in the reading part, there are the LEDs to do the reading, okay. The other. Yeah, maybe. Uh, sorry, because we have. Uh, in, uh, okay. Because I uh, I have to power the, the the computer. Sorry about that. Otherwise, uh, I have to to say goodbye in advance. I don't want to to do it. Okay, just a second, guys. Okay, all is fine. We can go back to the to the presentation and, of course, the questions. There are the questions. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so uh, other questions. Uh, when you say, uh, sorry, mm, I don't want to pronounce it uh, the name because for sure I, my, pronunci my pronunciation will be wrong. <laughs> sorry about that. When you say that it needs no calibration, do you mean that the equipment that does not require the scheduled maintenance? Yes, this is the uh, the answer. Uh, of course, uh, I tell you uh, you don't need any calibration because our reagents are already calibrated. Okay, so you can start running analysis without problem. We have uh, 
calibrated uh, the reagents for you. And uh, you don't need any maintenance in general. Okay. Of course, if you want to check the analyzer, because uh, as uh, we've seen before, before we, we work with uh, international groups, uh, so they have uh, specific quality, con uh, quality control protocols uh, that uh, impose uh, to them to have a check on all the instruments. In this case, no problem. We have, we have uh, a specific uh, control solution kits that you can use to demonstrate the accuracy and the repetitivity of the system over the time. So uh, we can, uh, you can arrange uh, the quality control protocol as you like with our uh, control solution kits. Uh, okay, uh, Samuel Omar uh, from Uganda. And, uh, for okay, so he's asking that uh, they need uh, many CDR food for different applications. Of course, uh, we've seen all the applications uh, is able to run the food lab. So with this analyzer, you can you can do everything we have seen. Okay, so we can analyze uh, uh, milk and dairy products, uh, oils and fats, uh, uh, bakery products, uh, eggs. So uh, on our websites, you have uh, you have all the information about the analysis and the matrices you can analyze uh, with uh, with our system. Okay. Uh, Okay, here uh, another uh, question about the quality control. Uh, um, if you run uh, 300, uh, 400 tests a month, uh, you can uh, run, uh, I think, uh, uh, a check for each parameter every month or every two weeks. I think uh, this is the, uh, the right protocol that you can, uh, you can use. Okay, here, uh, of course, uh, another interesting question. How does, uh, which is the cost of the CDR food lab compared to the HPLC or the traditional method? Of course, uh, it's not so easy to calculate the cost uh, because, of course, uh, compared to the HPLC, it's, more, it's very expensive, more, much more than the food lab, considering the, uh, the, the, the instrument. And of course, uh, uh, in this case, uh, um, the problem is the manpower. You need technicians, you need uh, people, skilled people to use it, uh, you need reagents. Uh, and uh, of course, uh, as uh, we talked about before, uh, both titration and HPLC, you have uh, to use them uh, into a laboratory control. With uh, the food lab, you can analyze, uh, you can do analysis directly <laughs> at, the process, at the processing plant. Uh, okay, other... Yes, uh, another question also uh, for palm kernel oil. Can we get FFA in lauric acid? Of course, of course. Uh, the expression of, of the free fatty acid can be in uh, oleic acid, in lauric acid, or in uh, all the acid you want. So it's just the expression. Uh, uh, so we can put this uh, conversion into the uh, calibration. So you can have uh, the results uh, expressed uh, as you like. Okay, so other... Is this, uh... Okay, so there are a lot of questions, Guy. I, I don't know if we are able to uh, to answer everything. I, I'll pick uh, just uh, just another one. For example, here, does temperature affect uh, the CDR food lab? The answer is, of course, no. Of course not. Uh, the analyzer is, is thermostated, uh, is very stable. So we have uh, analyzers uh, spread all over Africa. Uh, so we don't need, we don't, we don't have any problem. Okay. The last question, and after I want to to show how the system works, uh, 
is uh, if uh, the junior, uh, for junior, one sample, we can do different tests, uh, if not multi-test. Okay, about the junior, uh, we can run, as uh, you've seen, we have the reading part. So the reading part is made by uh, four wells. And uh, one well will be used uh, for the reading. The other three uh, will be used for the analysis. So you can run three analyses of the same type at the same time. So you can't do, uh, unfortunately, different analyses at the same time. Okay, guys, I think, uh, of course, uh, for all the other questions, you can, uh, you can ask us, you can write uh, email. Uh, we are, of course, uh, more than happy to answer uh, to, to all of you. And um, so I uh, give us uh, uh, one minute uh, to set the camera because we will change the camera and uh, we will start the demonstration, okay? Okay, so here you can uh, you can see you can see the, uh, the analyzers, uh, both both ones, uh, both of them, the big one and uh, and the small, the little brother, the junior. So here we have the incubation part, we have the reading part, and here we have the screen, the screen where we. Uh, you can, uh, we can select uh, easily the, uh, the analysis we need, to, we need to do. So we select now, as I told, we are going to do free fatty acid, peroxide and anisine. So we select oils and fats and uh, we start from peroxides. So uh, while we are waiting for the peroxides, we can run a free fatty acid. So peroxide here you have different ranges okay so we select uh, the most appropriate the sample we have but here today we have um, uh, an olive oil sample so we have a range between 0 0.3 and 25 this is the most uh, appropriate for uh, for this kind of sample we select it and the analyzer controls the reading part and we can start running the analysis here we select sample one. Of course, you can, if you want, change the name of the name of the sample. And as I told you, you have written on the screen the method. So the method says uh, to have 500 microliters of sample, shake and start reading. Of course, we can call the method. Uh, because the method on the screen is a short one. Here you have the method like, like a, a method of uh, a paper method, okay? With the help of the pictures, you can uh, see, you can read step by step what you have to do. Okay, so the method says uh, five microliters. We, now we are going to collect uh, sample with the pipette sorry we set the camera here we are okay so with uh, a pipette like this a pipette with a positive displacement piston this is very important uh, because we are uh, we are analyzing oil with uh, a normal eye pipette uh, would be impossible okay so we take the sample And we select five microliters and we, the first thing we have to do is to clean, is to rinse the, this tip with the oil I'm going to analyze so easily. In this way, taking the sample and discharging it on the paper, I can clean the tip. After I collect five microliters with a little piece of paper, I can wipe the tip in order to remove all the oil, all the oil on the external part. Now I have exactly five microliter, five microliters into into the tip. 
I have here the cuvette of peroxide, okay? So I open the cuvette and I put the tip into the liquid and press up and down to, to release the sample into the cube, like this. And that's it. This is the most difficult operation of the analysis, okay? So I close the cubit, I shake it in order to homogenize the, the internal part of the cubit. I put the cubit into the reading part with a blue light so you can't miss it. And I read the blank, the starting point of the, the absorbance. After that, I can continue the session if uh, I have uh, other samples or at the end of the session I can press stop okay now I have to add 10 microliters of a second reagent shake and start the timer that's it so with uh, with this pipette with this easy pipette I can collect the reagent Okay. So easily, 10 microliters. I take the reagent, I open the cubit, and I cut the reagent in. I close, I shake, because of course now the reaction has to start and I start the timer. Now I have just uh, three minutes to wait. In this time, I can uh, I can do an acidity, for, for example. This is the most multitasking uh, I have uh, talked to you about before. So I take free fatty acid, okay, the cubit for acidity. I, I go to home on the screen. I press on continue and I have to select acidity. I have to select the, the appropriate range. It's an old voice, so 0 0.03, 1.1 .1 is more than enough. And we start running the analysis. All this while we are waiting for peroxide. Okay, so we select uh, sample one. This is uh, the easiest analysis of the full lab. So here the method says insert the test tube, the cubit into the reading cell, marked with the blue light. So we are going to, to read the blank. This is the cubit of acidity. I put it into the reading cell. I read it. Now, again, there is the possibility to run more samples. We, we are going to run only one. We press stop, and now the method says I have to add 2.5 microliters of sample, shake and start the reading. So I change the volume of the of the pipette. I collect 2.5 microliters. Same story. I have to rinse the tip with the oil. I have to analyze so four or five times like this and now I take the sample so this is of course important as, as before to wipe the tip like this in order to have exactly 2.5 microliters into it after this we open the cubit of free fatty acid we can leave the cubit here, no problem. We uh, put the tip into the liquid. I press up and down to release all the sample inside a few times like this. And after I go up, of course, very important, I have to shake because uh, we need to homogenize the cubit. And I have to read again here what happened. We had a decoloration of the reagent. This decoloration is correlated to uh, free fatty acid. 
So we read again. In the meantime, peroxides is over, are over. So anyway, yeah, we can wait and finish free fatty acid. You can wait more, no problem. Here we have the result of free fatty acid, 0 0.18 in oleic acid, but we can have the result as a goal in, in lauric acid, no problem. The analyzer is ringing, it means it's waiting for us about the peroxide, so we press here, peroxide is over, it is in red, so it means the, the incubation is over. We go ahead, we take the cubet now, we put the cubet into the, the reading cell and we press read, we press to read. And we have the result. Okay. 22 point. It's not a good oil, I can say. Okay. The last uh, analysis uh, is uh, the anisidin. So we press back, we select anis we select oils and fats, anisidin. Here we have uh, different uh, calibration cards, we select the, the first one, anisidine. We have a specific calibration for fish oil, for example. So we select anisidine. We have the cubic of the anisidine. And we need to change the pipe, OK? Because we need to add 20 microliters, the method says. We take, we can run the anisidine on the same sample. Same story, I have to rinse the tip in order to, to clean the tip itself with the oil I have to analyze. So I take the sample, same handling, I have to wipe the tip like this, and that's it. We open the cubet here, and we have to put the cubet into the reading cell, uh, sorry, into, into the cubit. We have to put the tip into the cubit. We press up and down. And that's it. I close, and of course, I have to shade by inversion. And we start the reading. In this case, uh, the as you can see, the method is different is uh, the, the, the anisidine is uh, a kinetic method. So we need to keep the uh, cubet into the reading cell uh, till the end uh, of the reading itself. So after 60 seconds, uh, we are going to have the result. So you can see that is uh, a little bit different, uh, the procedure compared to free fatty acid and peroxide. Anyway, is uh, is easy as uh, the, the other uh, two analysis uh, we, we have seen before. OK, so after this analysis, uh, we uh, are going to show you a few treatments. For example, we have seen uh, in the presentation uh, the extraction with, uh, with a food press. We have uh, a sample of uh, nuts here. We, uh, we will see also the treatment uh, we will see uh, also the treatment uh, uh, of, for the flower and also uh, for, uh, uh, yeah, we, we will see flower and, and nuts that are the most important ones, I think. Okay, here we have uh, the results about the anisinin, 3.3. So all the results, of course, always are displayed on the screen and printed on, uh, on the paper. Okay, so uh, what about the kits? Uh, here we have uh, an example. Okay, so an example of, uh, of peroxide. Okay, of course it's open. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not uh, like this. Uh, and you have on the label uh, written the law, the batch, uh, the all the the temperature stock. Uh, and all the information, and inside you have uh, uh, 
10 qubits, uh, 10 per field qubits. So you have all you need to run 10 tests of uh, peroxides. Okay. The kits are always uh, in, this, uh, in this shape. This is the kit, of, uh, for example, of uh, free fatty acid. Okay. So here we have, uh, uh, looking at the, uh, the treatments, here we have the full press. Okay. So with this press, you can, and we are going to see it, we can extract the oil from the sample. We have nuts here, so we need to uh, fill this, uh, this pot with, uh, with the nuts, okay, like this. See that it's very, yeah, very so pressing it now we are going to see the oil squeezing up from the piston. You can see, yeah. So easily we can mechanically extract the oil. So if we have a lot of oil also, this oil is absolutely not enough to run a traditional method, but is more than enough uh, for the food oil. So as you can see, it's turbid because of course we have solid fat and oil. And uh, So this is the, the oil that we have collected. We, we, we have collected. So we can fill a little cuvette. We can centrifuge it with a, a easy centrifuge like this, getting a situation like this with the clear oil and the solid part on the bottom. So we can easily collect the oil and run the analysis like we, uh, as we did before. Okay, so as you see that the treatment is uh, absolutely easy. Another example is the, the flower. We have a sample of flower here. Okay, so we have to weigh one gram in a cubic like this. So we have here one gram we have to add three milliliters with a pipette of uh, this extraction solution, okay, that uh, will extract the, the fat part from the uh, from the flour, and of course we have to homogenize everything. We uh, we can do it now. I have uh, only. Uh, Sorry about that. I have just a pipette uh, of uh, one milliliter, so we are going to, to do three addition. Of course, you need uh, a three milliliter pipette. A three milliliter pipe. You, you need uh, a, a pipette of uh, ten milliliters to do this properly. So. Here we are. Of course, we have to shake like this, and we can use a, a rotator like this. Of course, after uh, an extraction of uh, in the method, if I remember well, we need 10 minutes of this uh, extraction. After this, we need to centrifuge 
of course, we have already did it. And we get a situation like this, where you have uh, all the fat part extracted uh, into the liquid. So we have a specific calibration curves on the food lab called uh, FFA flour, peroxide flour, and anisdin flour, uh, with which you can run uh, these parameters on, uh, on, uh, on these kind of samples. Again, we have performed now one extraction, one single extraction, and with this you can, you can carry out three different analyses. So with only one extraction, you do more analysis. Again, you save time, you save money, you save solvents, okay? Okay, I think uh, we, have, uh, we have finished. We can go back to the questions and uh, we'll uh, switch again camera and Let's see if you have uh, other questions. I think there are, uh, there are a lot. Okay. Okay, so okay, I have a question here. This system is valid uh, for for snacks, uh, of course. Uh, we have. Uh, uh, I told you you can use uh, these systems. Uh, this system for uh, the analysis of the frying oil and uh, the finished product, the snack. Squeezing, uh, as you uh, as we've seen, uh, uh, for the nuts uh, you can fill the the pot with uh, with, uh, with snacks, uh, squeeze them, uh, squeeze the oil up out, uh, and uh, analyze the oil like you, if you had uh, a normal oil. Okay. Okay. In the question and answer session, uh, we have. Uh, other uh, other question of course uh, you will uh, no worries uh, you will uh, receive uh, the copy of the presentation we are recording the webinar so uh, we can send you back also the uh, the registration of the webinar so no problem at all uh, what Okay, of course, uh, guys. If you if you want, uh, you can uh, leave your email and uh, or you can uh, you can ask the question uh, you like uh, by mail, and uh, we can answer you. Okay, other uh, another question: Can one reagent qubit be used for more than one parameters? Unfortunately, the answer is no. One qubit is one analysis one shot okay one type of analysis so and, uh, as we've seen uh, we need cubets for free fatty acid and uh, different cubets uh, for peroxides that are different from anisinin we are talking about uh, a chemical analysis so uh, once you uh, you have had the, the oil into the qubit the qubit is done you have the result and the qubit is done Okay, the, uh, another question is anonymous. Is there a need to clean the easy pipe? No, you can, uh, at the end of the session, you can uh, just use uh, alcohol, normal alcohol, uh, after you can, uh, you can dry the tip and that's it. So it's, uh, it's very easy. 
Okay, there are people interested also in Beer Lab and Wild Lab. Of course, we have your email. We are going to send you all the information about uh, uh, all the uh, other analyzers for beverage we have. Don't worry. Other questions on the on the chat? Okay, another. What is the uh, Jamil? From, uh, question from Jamil, what is uh, uh, internationally acceptance of tests made from this equipment and reagents? As uh, we've seen before, uh, uh, considering the accuracy and the precision of the system, the system is uh, equivalent to the reference method. So we have, uh, uh, it's like you had uh, a reference method, okay? Okay, uh, another question from uh, Annalyn Gonzalez. Uh, if there is no maintenance required, what is the assurance the equipment is running well and the results generated are not compromised? This is a good question. As we, we talked about before, we have uh, the possibility to check the entire system with our control solution kit. We have a dedicated control solution kit for each parameter. So if you want to check uh, periodically, the, the system in order to uh, to see if uh, the system is is working properly we have to say another thing uh, the system is composed by analyzer reagents pipette but uh, there is a fourth part that, that is the handling so if you don't have the right handling you will have uh, a wrong result so for example if you change uh, uh, the people that uh, are using the analyzer uh, a good way is uh, uh, to check the handling is to have uh, a control solution. So you can train your new uh, people with this control solution. Uh, if uh, after this test, uh, the results are into the acceptance range, it means that uh, all the system is working good. Analyzer, the agents, pipette, and also the new guy is using the analyzer. Okay. Uh, of course, we are going to send a presentation, no problem. Uh, okay, does the time we leave reagents affect uh, results uh, before use? Uh, what means before use? Okay, normally what we suggest and also what is written uh, in the method is to put the cubettes uh, into the incubation part uh, at least five minutes before okay uh, after that you can run the analysis of course if you leave the cubettes for uh, all the day long uh, is not a good uh, it's not a good thing okay anyway we are we have uh, pretty stable reagents Anyway, if on the method is written, put the, put the, uh, the qubits five minutes before, it's good to, to follow the method. Of course, uh, after, uh, when the incubation is over, when, uh, like, uh, for example, we've seen uh, before with the, with the peroxides, you can leave uh, uh, the qubits uh, in the incubation part. You can after, you can, um, you can wait for a call or uh, something like that. Anyway, if you read it, uh, after five minutes uh, is uh, absolutely not a problem because, uh, of course, uh, uh, the technique is an end point. So uh, after the, the incubation time we have is the minimum time to develop the reaction. OK, another question. How many samples can be tested uh, in a day? as you are able to do. <laughs> so you can uh, work on the machine all the day long, no problem. If you are able to do it, uh, we will be happy. And uh, so no problem at all. You, you don't, have, you don't uh, have any limit uh, into the number of analysis, of course. Uh, another question, can we use other brands of pipette or centrifuge? Mm, uh, the answer is yes, of course, the important thing is that about the pipette, the pipette must be a pipette with a positive displacement piston. You need an accurate pipette, 
okay? Because if you use uh, a not accurate pipette, uh, of course, uh, you can have wrong results, okay? So recommend uh, to use, uh, uh, we recommend to use uh, uh, our easy pipette to run uh, the, the analysis. Okay, uh, another question, how many seconds uh, is a good time to shake? Uh, there is no rules uh, you can uh, uh, shake by inversion four or five times is more than enough. It is not absolutely, uh, is, is not absolutely crucial this part. Uh, you can, uh, it's important to have uh, an, uh, an homogenized cubit uh, before the reading, just that. Okay, uh, again, how can you confirm the results? Okay, I think the, mo the most uh, uh, part of the, of the questions are uh, how I can check uh, uh, the situation and uh, I can check uh, the system. As I told you, we have a proper uh, way to do it. Uh, we have a control solution. Uh, we have a control solution specific uh, for each test. So with this way, you can check. Uh, you can check. Uh, uh, you can do a quality control. Okay. Okay. Another normally another question. Normally we. Do, we done triplicate of each sample. Can we measure same sample more than uh, one times? Uh, okay, here is not uh, okay. Normally, if you talk about uh, the normal photometry, uh, yes, you have to uh, read the three times in order to check if you are at the end point. This is the reason why you read the three times. I, I suppose uh, in this case, in this case, you don't need it. Okay, because uh, all the method is designed. Uh, and is prepared for you. So uh, this is the, the three minutes of peroxides, for example, is the minimum time to get uh, the final level of the absorbance, okay? And we have to say that uh, the reaction is already um, at the end point, just after, uh, just after uh, one minute or one minute and a half, uh, the reaction is at the end point. To be sure, of course, we put uh, a longer time uh, for, uh, for the reaction. So the answer is uh, you don't need to uh, recheck uh, the cubit. Okay. Uh, can we measure sense? Okay, yes, the, the last part of the question, uh, can we measure the same sample more than one time or we have to use three prefilled cubits? Absolutely not. One prefilled cubette, only one uh, reading. You don't need the, the fact of uh, the three readings uh, uh, come from the normal photometry. CDR food lab is not a normal photometry. Okay, so you have uh, to run the analysis like uh, we did uh, before, just that. Okay, other. Uh, other interesting question. Can the client use uh, uh, a CDR food lab for oil and beer as well as wine? The answer is no. We have two different lines of uh, analyzers. With a food lab, you can run analysis on oil, eggs, milk, and what we've seen before. About the beverage, uh, we have a different analyzer into the beverage sector, we can put, for example, on a beer lab, the wine configuration. We can put on a beer lab, the side of configuration or the reverse. We can do all the combination, all the combinations, but into the beverage part. We can't, unfortunately, we cannot put oil and beer together or wine, okay? Another interesting question, how do you do uh, the updating of the machine? It's uh, uh, very, very easy. 
you can when uh, normally when we have a release of the software we um, we put a file on we have a specific uh, website for uh, support okay so we release a file for the updating so you need to of course we, we we do a communication of the new release of the software so you can go to this website you can connect the analyzer to the computer you download the uh, the file and easily you drag the file into the machine into the the food lab and automatically the update uh, uh, starts so is uh, is very very easy okay okay guys so i think uh, we we say we said more more or less everything about the system uh, anyway if you have questions you can uh, you can write us uh, and uh, of course we will be more than happy uh, to to answer you okay of course uh, i have to thank you everyone to for being with us uh, and uh, i hope in the next webinars uh, we can uh, we can have uh, uh, mo most of them uh, uh, with us okay Thank you very much to everyone and uh, ciao.